Oh. All right, uh, real quick, injury report. Uh, Wes Schweitzer, DMP, Charles Leno Limited. Everyone else on the list uh, this week was full. And then game statuses, Wes Schweitzer will be out. Charles Leno will be questionable. Everyone else who was full will not be listed. Um, with, with the injuries, first of all, with the offensive line, with Nick Martin, um, going with a new guy like that, but experience, uh, what, are you, what are you anticipating from him? What do you like about him after well, just a couple weeks? smart football player. He's done a nice job picking up what we do. Um, you know, he's had over 60 starts in this league, so there's no concern there. Uh, he understands the game. He's, he's uh, very athletic, great hand placement, um, and, and he, like I said, he's picked up what we do very quickly. But the challenge for him going against this kind of front because of what they do up front, what is the challenge for them? Well, more so than anything else, is just really getting the calls out and then uh, you know playing what they see. Um, Tyler Larson, I don't think we've asked about him in some time, any sense of when his status uh, coming off the Achilles and where he might be available? Um, yeah, he'll be available next week. He will be. We're going we're gonna to probably take him off of the list, the pup list, and see how he is in practice, and we'll go from there. Okay. And I guess while I'm here, uh, obviously Chase and Brian are next week as well. No, they've, they're coming along very well. They'll both get examined this weekend, and we'll go from there once, once we get the word from the doctors. Okay. Speaking of Chase, um, Montez and Jonathan Allen have both kind of noticed lately that he's – but look better, you know, as he's gotten more. Have you noticed him turn a corner at all in his rehab or kind of where I, he's at? I do, but again, I'm not the doctor. <laughs> sure. Um, but he has looked really good. He really has. He's done a lot of good things. Um, I know every time that they talk about getting to a certain certain spot, he's hit it every week. So we're, we're pretty excited about that. But again, you know, uh, Dr. Andrews is the one that, that, that I, I, for the most part, has the last say. He's the one that's, you know, doing the exams. Um, he did examine them last week. It, it was a very positive report. Um, he said, no, I, I do need to still see a few things. Um, you know, one of the things that we're able to have a baseline as far as where he needs to be in terms of um, his speed, his leg strength, because we have, you know, we, like most teams, use all the, uh, the, uh, the GPS data that we get and, and we break it down so we understand it. So because of that, we've been able to create a baseline. And he's very, I, I know for a fact he's very close to it. But again, Doc wants to see those results, you know, this week, next week, going forward, and we'll see how it goes. Is he still the the farthest away of the three, or? Um, again, I, I I can't tell you that on, on that Matthew. That that's that's more a doc thing. When Benjamin St. Juice plays so well at a at a outside corner spot as opposed to where the slot that he'd been playing earlier, does that maybe make you? Reconsider how you're deploying him or shuffling around the lineup a little it bit. It's something we mostly discuss, but he has played well at the slot too. I mean, that's that's the biggest thing is that he's played very well at the slot for us, and so we just got to continue to to, to go through the games, examine the games as coaches, break it down, and then go from there. It seems like there's been some plays that have stuck out through the season where the coordinators have been, both coordinators have been a little more aggressive. Has, is that different from last year or are we yes. just notice it? Okay. It is different. I, I think it's one of the things that, you know, we, we've done some, some things, you know, during OTA's mini camps and, and the beginning of training camp that have been aggressive and, and have, have, have actually done some good things for us. Um, they're plays that, you know, again, you, you've got to execute them, get them and, and to be successful. And when we've had a chance to execute uh, um, them, they've been successful for us. So, you know, we want to continue with that mindset. We want the guys to understand that, you know, we, we believe that they have the ability to do these types of things. And we just got to, hey, we got to get better and better at them and keep working at them. Why do you think they're more aggressive this year? I think just understanding that the guys are a little bit more comfortable in what we're doing. You know, for the most part, with the defense, I know this, it, it is definitely different from the first two seasons. Um, and with the players we have, with the, with the athletes we have, I mean, you, you look at some of these guys and, and their, their athleticism, we've got to capitalize on those things. And by that, I mean, when you watch the way Jamie can run as a linebacker, we've got to make sure he's going in the right direction, going downhill and using that, that speed. With, with the speed we have, safety and their athleticism, we've got to make sure that these guys, are first of all, they're on the field. That's why you see a lot of the Buffalo that we're doing, um, you know, some of the big nickel stuff that we've done. 
Um, it's, it's to get these types of players on the field and have them really cut it loose and go. It's kind of like a, the scheme tweak. It's, it's make, fitting those calls to the personnel in the Correct. same way. Correct, and that's the big part. I mean, you look at the skill set we have with the wide receiver crew, and there's some things that, hey, we've got to take advantage of. Um, and as, as guys get healthier, healthier, tight end position, there are some things that we really want to start implementing you know, to, to feature and, and use Logan like we did last year before he got hurt. You know, and then when we get Brian Robinson back, there's some things that we can do that we want to feature. Um, his skill set and, and the skill sets that not just he has, but AG has and and and, um, and JD. I mean, th those three guys are, are, are all quality backs and they all have their own special abilities. And once you have the full complement, now you can just grow it even more. With all those guys, how do you avoid, you know, being almost, you know, paralyzed by having so many options? Well, because again, just understanding that there's one ball, but it's all built into the call, you know, is that, is that we make a call. If it's a pass, there's a quarterback progression that has to go through it. And sometimes, let's say, you know that, that when, you put, when you put Terry out at the X and, they're, you know, and, and you, we feel good about that matchup, those calls now are where that's the first read. Okay, now all of a sudden you like the slot matchup. You say, okay, we'll make this call, but Terry's still at the X. But, but Curtis is at the slot. We like that matchup. So at the beginning of the progression, that's the first read. And if he goes from here and he's got to go from here to the X, well, then so be it. So you, you know, but you have to understand where you fit in those calls and why we're doing it. And I think that's one of the things that, you know, and, and, and I know Terry has been so unselfish because you never hear him gripe or complain because he understands through the progression, if it gets to me, then I got to be ready to make the play. So I, he runs the routes the way he's supposed to. If he's the first, pro, first of the progression, he runs the route the way he's supposed to. So no matter what, you're getting the same quality from Terry all the time just in case the read gets to him. So you, you you know that's kind of the way it is. I mean, at the end of the day, you know if 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 we spread the ball out and 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 guys like Terry and and Jahan and and Curtis are getting you know anywhere between four and eight touches each, you know that's what that's 24 touches maximum and 12 minimum. But you, you're you're hoping it's somewhere in that that mix up of of between those three guys, and you feel as if you are spreading the ball. I mean, because you do have a lot of weapons, but that's the beauty of this offense is, is if we can spread it out and keep it rolling, it, it, it's more, it's much more successful than if you just constantly throw it to one. Now, if you're just throwing it to one guy and he's having huge success, then you just keep feeding. Kind of what we did early in the first quarter of the Jacksonville game with, with Curtis. And does Logan look fully back to you through three games? I think he's still feeling his way through a little bit. Um, and again, that's just my personal assessment. Mm -hmm. Um, and we've, we've, we've tried to be where we try to build up each rep, set of reps per game a little bit more. Um, we got a little carried away in the first game, so we, we paired it back big time in the, in the next you know, games two and three. And as he continues to work, and you see it in practice, there are some things that you, you watch and you just, you know, and one, one just, to show, just to let you know, like one is like when he turns off of his, his, his left leg going the other way, it's, you know, it. You know, from left to right, because it was his right, I believe it was his right knee, right? Yeah. Yes. You can see a little bit of, you know, he's not quite sure of it yet. So as he continues to progress and gets more and more out there, I think you'll see it. You'll see more and more of the, of the Logan that we know. Got another injury one, sorry. But for Chase Roulier, um, do you guys have any kind of update there, no. severity of he of will. He, he is, he is going to have another MRI. Um, he, had, he had a lot of swelling, and, and the doc wanted to wait till that went down. And so he wanted to get a second one before he decided anything. So we're still waiting on, on, on Doc's report. Um, you can use my I'm right here. Yeah. I'm right here. <laughs> you have a game like last week, you give up the sacks. Everybody knows you're going to try maybe something a little bit different. How much do you look at that and say, well, Dallas knows that you're going to have to do something different too and try to anticipate how they're going to play, what you guys might react to? Does that make sense? Yeah. It's that chestnut. But, but I would like to say it's not necessarily having to do something different. It's maybe do something better. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, that's really it. And, 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 and I loved what Micah Parsons said. He basically said, he said, well, I expect them to be better at it. You know, it's, 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 it's these guys are professionals. They're going to go back, look at what they did wrong, 
get those things corrected, maybe do something a little different, but they're going to, you know, you, you can't expect them to be like that back to back sure. to back. It's, it, at some point, you know, they're going to, because they're pros. And, and I just thought that's very insightful, the young man. When, and when they can pressure with four, they pressure with four back, what is the impact on some of the quick game stuff that made you want to run? If you had to, is, well, is there a bigger impact on that or some other thing? It, it, if they're just pressuring with four and you try to go quick game, now you also have to remember that quick game is going to be based on, on them. Right. If they're off and they're only pressuring with four, man, that, that's, that's huge. But if they're on and they're pressuring with four and they're trying to press, now in, in a lot of people's minds they look outside and say, well, we're going to throw the go route. So now it's, 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 it's take the snap, get your, get your drop, take your hitch, throw the ball. So it's really not just, you know, how does it impact the quick game, but how does it impact, you know, based on, on, on their defense that's been called in terms of coverage. If it's man coverage, it's going to change it a certain way also versus zone. Hey, Ron, I wanted to ask you, I'll go ahead and leave. It's not about, I'll figure out that. Ben, ben Lou, Matt. Um, I was going to ask you about what did you think about Jamin? It looked like he did have a better game. Yes. But I'm curious on a different note. Obviously, you and Jack have made some comments about he needed yep. to do more, and he seems yep. to have responded to that. What's the? For, how have you learned over here to for some players maybe to say something publicly, and for others, yep. you know, it's just not the way to go. Right. There are some guys that that, that you, you you try to put your arm around and talk to, and just say you know get out there. Um, you know, they, they take things a little more to heart, a little more personal. Um, other guys, you know, for some guys, that becomes the challenge when it gets publicly. And I think for Jamin, he's taken that as the challenge, you know. And I know he put out a funny tweet that, you know, he didn't want anybody to mistake, so he took it down. But he puts it out because that's the personal challenge. And so that's kind of the thing that we look at with him. And so you say, you know what, this is a guy that if you want him to, 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 to get it, you, you got to make sure he understands. That's the challenge. Let's go get it. Let's go, dude. So I think it, it is, the, you know, you do it based on the personality. Um, for the offense, is there an expectation that it, that that unit should be ahead because they have more veteran players? Like you've mentioned, this idea yeah. of veteran versus younger players, but that's a unit that I mean, I think Dotson's really the only rookie, and there yeah. aren't that many young guys. No, there's not a lot of young guys on the unit. I mean, between him and Cosme, um, <clears throat> I think are the uh, are, are, and 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 John Bates. Um, Antonio, and when B. Rob gets back out there, you would expect them to be a little bit more. But the one thing that's kind of been a little disruptive, unfortunately, has been, you know, we had the two guards didn't have the kind of training camp you would love to, and we're now on our third center. So there's a little bit of that kind of they got to develop that rapport a little bit. Um, but I think because for the most part it is a veteran group, we we should feel that we should have a little bit more success. And 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 I think. You know, there's an opportunity for us to, to take steps and go forward and do the things that we need to do and play better. I, I really do, and, and and I'm excited about the opportunities we have. Thank you. All right, coach. This isn't really X's and O's, but it's still football. Um, music is everywhere. We see, hear music all over the place when we come out here. Do you ever get into the music that the players listen to? And um, do you ever? Groove to it. I mean, you as a coach. Well, I groove to the music. You know, <laughs> believe me, I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a star shirt. But um, you know, what what I what I what I get concerned with in, all, in the truth of the matter, I, I get concerned with the language. I really do, mostly because you know we 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 have you know diverse staff of people, and so I think the music has to be appropriate. I I I, I get it. I understand it. It's, it's part of the culture. You know, one of the things that, that I understand that, that I learned from, from Coach Madden way back uh, in our conversation that I used to have with him was, was that, you know, you got to understand the culture. you got to understand what's, what's important to them, um, what speaks to, to, to them. And the music does, and I get that. But having said that, I, I do think we just have to be aware. I mean, you know, there is – there is some, you know, some propriety that we have to, we have to be aware of, but um, 
No, I don't dance now. I, 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 that's, that's <laughs> what one would thing. you put on the playlist? Like, what, what would, Mine? What would Mom Rivera oh, put on the playlist? I'm going to play something from the 70s, so I'll tell you that right now. Um, you know, that's that kind of fits me. A little bit of Motown I appreciate a lot. Um, some of the contemporary stuff um, I, I get. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it is definitely um, a is little different. Is it a different. battle for you as a coach, like you said, understanding the yeah. psyche of the player yeah. and also realizing the culture that we're in today? Yes, yes. And, you, you know, and you, you want to be aware of it. I mean, you know, it, it's kind of a fun thing for, for our guys because, you know, in our weight room, that's – in the weight room, that's one of the things that, that is very prevalent. And they play every, every genre. I mean, it, they play contemporary. They play hip-hop. They play country. Um, you know, they play rock because they're aware of it. I mean, and, but they do it because it's, they, they, you know, it's, it's not, hey, we're not just playing this or playing that. They do it because they know they're in, they're, their locker room is, is, is diverse. Sounds cool. Right. Thank, you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <coughs> I do expect some points for the freaking. <laughs> <laughs> yep, something.